Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. We're going to be talking about this topic up here uh, regarding Gen Z and home buying. Um, on this first segment, it talks about uh, of the 86.2% of Gen Zers who want to purchase a home, nearly 45% are looking to purchase their first home in the next five years. So, Trevor, do you see this being possible for Gen Z in current times? Anything is possible. I mean, the 45% that they surveyed could could actually do it, but the, there's some nuances in that that's, that will factor in. I mean, if 45% in the next five years, I mean, in the next five years, is supply going to increase? Is starter homes going to be created? So right now, starter home... If the median home price is like three seventy five, the starter homes is still going in the high twos, threes, uh, and then they're not creating more of them. So they need a combination of a couple things to happen, and that's including the people that's in the starter homes now moving up to you know move up homes or being a move up buyer to give opportunity to the starter homes. I mean, here in Florida, especially in the Tampa area. A starter home still gonna cost you about three seventy five to four hundred thousand dollars, unless you like in you know, in those, you know, nefarious places where crime is a little higher and stuff like that. But still, in those areas, you're still looking at three fifty or some. You know, if you're not getting something that's a fixer up, but if you want something moving and ready, you're looking in high threes right now. And I mean, you can look at you know San Francisco area and things like that. But if you go into different pockets of the nation, you know, some more rural areas, uh, especially in the South, you know, you look at Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, and go to more rural areas, you can get, you can get into those things in the major metropolitan areas like a Tampa, a New York, um, San Francisco, Dallas, San Antonio, it's going to be much harder for the Gen Zers to be able to purchase homes, especially with the, you know, income, income to price of home variance that's out there in the market today. So if all those things stay the same like it is now, the income to price variance, then they're going to have a hard time doing that. But that will be more in the major metropolitan areas and not in the rural areas. It just depends on where people want to live. Yeah, it wasn't until recently that I realized that uh, amenities are a big um, desire for people. And I mean, understandingly uh, but when i talk to people around my age uh, being that i've started to look in the georgia market and seeing how cheap houses can be up there no one is interested in states like that and it seems you know everyone wants to be around uh tampa as you mentioned or a lot of people want to even move to a lot of people my age seem to like the idea of moving to la um which is you know an expensive real estate market or new york and i think in those areas it would be hard for gen z to afford or purchase a home in the next five years depending on the the income that they're making but in states like that i think it's very possible that uh the states that you mentioned the louisiana mississippi georgia states like that yeah and and the thing is, for a lot of people, it's amenities. They want to be around what's happening. It don't matter the age group. I mean, probably the more younger generation, they want more amenities than the older generations. I mean, like me, I hate to drive. So when I was looking to purchase my property, I wanted it close to the I mean, the amenities that I look, I look for with necessities, not entertainment amenities. I mean, I just so happened to be at a spot that it was close to, you know, the grocery store, the hospital, um, you know, the different things, you know, go out to restaurants and eat. I mean, they added, you know, Dave and Buster's and Skyfly, all that other crap that's out there, Top Golf and all that after the fact. But I had no, I don't have, I don't have me because I'm old soul, I guess. I had no interest in the, you know, entertainment value part. I was looking more for the necessity part of it. And, but people, but people today, they don't want to, like, like you, 
like you, you, you're super old, meaning like they don't want to be driving, you know, 45 minutes, two or three hours to get to entertainment destinations and stuff like that. You know, like where you live at, you're further off the beaten path of if there was, you know, just amenities, you know, and you're willing to, you know, drive to go here 35 minutes. People in that generation, they're not going to like that. They're like me. Especially if you look at social media, they think they're supposed to have a private jet by the time they're 25. So they think they're supposed to fly everywhere. You know, that's that's the closest thing that they want. And that's the thing that's going to hinder a lot of people. I mean, the older generations, like the Lakeland area, people just went there. Hey, I can afford this house. I can live here. I can raise my family here. And then that area just started growing and now more stuff's coming around it. But people look at survivability. What makes sense? Now there's new this new cast of characters that's out there in the Gen Z, and that's Alex too, by the way, y'all. Um, they want they want everything right there at their fingertips, and being right there at their fingertips costs a lot of money. Costs a lot of money. I mean, you hear about the people that want to you know move to Miami. Miami itself. I remember I was looking at the Miami market this about three four years ago. I mean, this was a house in the hood. I swear the house was only this big square. It was only about 800 square feet. Bars on the window. Window broken out. $550,000. So you want to be you want to be close to what's happening. You go have to pay up to do it. I mean, if, if it's one thing that I believe the older generations and I mean older than me generations had understanding and they went to where they can afford to live, you know, buy a house, get on the property ladder. Today's generation is more about, I want this, I want this, I want this. It don't matter if the money, the money don't make sense, the house don't pencil or none of that. It's I want it. So they're going to try to force their way in, in there. And I think in the end, it's going to cause a collapse. Once these people force their way in there, it's going to cause a bigger collapse in their financial situation. And it's going to be part on the, the economic cycle of the housing market in general. Yeah. yeah, And I, I, I do see, I, I agree with what you said right there, that this generation wants it like right now, like there's no patience for it. And they're very eager. And I see uh, maybe a sense of entitlement as well. Jealousy of the baby boomers. You know, I always see statistic reports on the baby boomers and the house, the house prices that they paid and the income that they had compared to the house prices now. Um, but as we both know, it's it always works the same, you know, as, as long as you want it, you'll find a way to get it. And it's just a matter of having the ambition and drive to be able to afford those homes. Just think of this over the last 50 years, and this is inflation adjusted over the last 50 years, the home price has jumped up 118% since 1965. The income is only jumped up 15%. So if we use in the rule, you know, we can even use Dave Ramsey's rule of 25% of your income should go to household expenses. So, so of course, that number, because the pay hasn't increased, that number today is more closer to 50 to 60% of your income is going to household expenses, especially with the interest rate. So these 45% of millennials, they think that they're going to get a house in the next five years, but where's the income drivers to make it happen? Especially if the house prices keep uh, appreciating at the level. So to get, you know, to be able to spend 25% of your income to get a house, you can't do it in a major, a major metropolitan area just based off the numbers alone. I mean, of course, if mom, dad's grandparents from, you know, the baby boomers step in and and help subsidize that, then it's possible. But with the income, the income in most of these areas is not possible for the majority. It will be outliers. It will be something that can do it for the majority. It's damn near impossible if they want to be in metro, major metropolitan areas and they don't have the income to make it happen. I don't think that 45% will get there if it's if they're looking into the major metropolitan areas. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. And I had seen that stat before. And I mean, my point too, just to like, I guess, make it more relatable to the audience is like, like you're saying, you, 
if you want a house, if you want that first home or whatever, it's going to be difficult to be in those areas because I was born and I'm from Tampa. You know, a house like the one I first bought would have cost about 350 325 you know, in Tampa at the time of 2020 before the market started to shoot up. And in Lakeland, those houses brand new were accessible at about 200 to 225 And so, yeah, Lakeland is, uh, you know, pulled back away from all the amenities like Orlando, Tampa, Miami, especially. And yeah, I, I think that's the best option for millennials is looking at remote, you know, rural locations like that. You'll still find good deals and they're still out there, but you'll be far away from where everything's happening at. But with all that being said, guys, if you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below on your house buying situation. Uh, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.